Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the invitation, and thank you also for the willingness to spend your time with me today. I know you're very busy people, so it's wonderful for you to be here today. This is the topic. And I will speak first about mobile communication, Internet of Things, intelligent networks, robots and intelligent agents, and look to the future. So I think we are all aware of the fact that mobile communication is everywhere. Certainly that was a theme already introduced. Perhaps we don't realize how common it is for us to spend our days and our nights with our mobiles. In fact, the majority of humans in the Western world sleep, if not with a partner, at least with the <laughs> mobile phone. But not only uh, in the West, but as you can see, many different countries, uh, including Japan, Australia, Spain, when they wake up, begin using the cell phone. We use them throughout the day. Most people, even while on vacations, and throughout the day. In fact, they spend, young people spend more time with their mobiles than with other people, including the people they love. Teens, nine hours a day with their social media and mobiles. Here's a little joke uh, from the cartoon. Uh, the girl is so happy, she's with her boyfriend, but she's distracted telling her friends about being with the boyfriend. And of course, the boy will be speaking on his mobile in the theater that evening. But our face-to-face -face relationships are vital to helping us be the people we are. And the displacement of face-to-face -face with distant others presents a major challenge going forward. Of course, I don't want to be only critical of mobile communication and new technology because they bring us many good things, including boyfriends and girlfriends via Tinder. But I will make the point that the more opportunities you have to meet new people, research shows the less happy you are with the choices that you have. So on the one hand, gives new opportunities. On the other hand, reduces the quality of those opportunities. And there's the problem of managing these new technologies. Even in restaurants or other places, they won't serve you if you're talking on your mobile phone. I was at a museum in New York City. A student tour was there. The importance of connection was so vital that the student hid behind one of his classmates to use the mobile phone. Once again, the problem of how do we socially accept these technologies is important. As I said, many good benefits. So here, for example, uh, your iPhone is on the psychiatrist couch. But it can reveal about you uh, whether you're socially isolated due to Bluetooth, how active you are, accelerometer, 
how your sleep is with the ambient light measure, even analyze the quality of the faces that you take when you take your selfies. Uh, the touch screen reveals the quality of your touch and the microphone can record stress in your voice and how many people are around you. So it's not just your little servant, it's also a device that can watch you. Uh, of course, technology can keep you awake while you're driving and can, by distraction, lead you into an accident. The toll is great in the United States. Even an airplane crash was caused by the pilot taking selfies. Um, as you heard before from uh, Senor Awad, uh, these things track you. And here in my state of Massachusetts in the US, a girl sent texts to encourage her boyfriend to kill himself. Which he did. And now she's going to jail for those texts. So as I said, these uh, and as you heard, these things make the world more transparent for us. And uh, you heard before about the possibility of fighting crime through this tracing and tracking, which is a valuable aspect. But also social monitoring and monitoring by authorities which I will also return to. But our technologies are moving forward quickly, much like Angry Birds. And in the future, we can imagine with Google Glass or other eye technologies, when you go on a date, you can find out about the wine with your glass when you're talking to the date get suggestions about topics, get rated as to how you're being received by the interest level of your date. So this is uh, from a video about the future, which uh, we don't have time to watch today. But as I said before with Betty, your social relationships become drained when you are, have these interfaces. So we've spoken about many of the benefits and a few of the downsides. Studies by professors show that these technologies can make you happy in getting your needs met, but also can rob you of the feelings of connection. So another scientific study just two weeks ago confirms this. And of course we have leaders such as Britain's Prince Harry trying to encourage people to put down their cell phones and enjoy life. To make a pun, uh, these requests fall on deaf ears. So let me turn now to the Internet of Things, which 
of course, can allow 3D manufacturing, but also manufacturing of emotion. So here, for example, I received a message, and my droid allows me to choose a response that makes it seem that I wrote the response. You may have such a thing on yours. I'm looking forward to when I can say something like this and just press the button about my sincere feelings for the event. So perhaps you have your birthday on Facebook, but um, some people, one of my students, for example, said that she took it down because she did not like the fake messages, happy birthday, they were so insincere. But I told her she should create an algorithm so each year it would change the automatic greeting on the cumpleaños. <laughs> so, uh, as I say, it's, uh, birthday greeting became an insult rather than a pleasure. Uh, she and others are very sensitive to fake emotion. In fact, we are very sensitive to insincerity. We watch other people's eyes and gestures to see whether they are being sincere in their interactions. One reason is, for example, if you're talking to someone and they're using the cell phone, you feel that that is being insincere. So let me talk now about transparency, which you've already heard a few words from the previous speaker. For example, Dole Food Company allows you to see about where your food comes from using mobile devices. Um, here, for example, are some American students finding out the quality of the beer before they purchase it and seeing the ratings and the social equity of the companies. And of course, beers are rated, professors are rated, restaurants are rated, but you as a customer are also rated. So let's look a little bit at rating. That, for example, if you take an Uber ride, forces the driver to be on his best behavior. But also, also forces you to be on your good behavior. I take the example of the Eiffel Tower in France about the problems of ratings. When this was built, it was very unpopular. It was considered a monstrosity. So if that had been rated by the crowds, today's symbol of the essence of France would not exist. So here are some uh, commentary, some ratings, if you will, at the time. And here were some alternatives to the Eiffel Tower that were considered. So this one of these might be the Eiffel Tower today. So I'll turn now to intelligent networks, which are aware of what's going on. They integrate data, respond to the situation, and allow lots of data collection. In San Diego, 3,200 smart sensors allow the traffic to move quickly 
allow people to find parking places and also uh, allow people to be aware of air quality. Even something like a piece of luggage now has self-awareness. Here's um, a piece of luggage that will tell you how it's been abused by the airline. It will get uh, alerted and lock up if it goes very far from you. So here is an object that reacts to us and with us and is aware of its environment. Uh, this is not uncommon. Now we have many of these tracking devices for sale, even in drugstores. And of course, we ha are being tracked ourselves. So Google can trace you from your online behavior. And of course, already tracks us online. So when I looked for flights from US to here, I began getting advertisements for hotels in Santiago. My students have figured this out. So when they want to have a party, they will uh, say, let's have a party. Wouldn't you like some pizza? And then they get advertisements for discounted pizza. Or if they have a problem with their car, they send notes to themselves. I have a problem with my car. And they get discounts on repairs. Uh, and facial recognition is becoming very important. Facebook is already scanning your face. Uh, and of course, with cameras in public places, a new power is unlocked, including with the geographic systems. that reveal information about where you live. So in China, if you cross the street against the light, your face will appear uh, to be embarrassed. And of course, in settings, you can see uh, people, who they are, not just their face. Uh, I, I saw a system like this in China. When you pass through the gates, your picture appears. And if it's not you, everyone becomes aware of it. And I've seen this system also here in Chile. So putting this on the streets in China, you know who is moving, you know any violations against the car, and all of this can be collected and reported. So we once thought when internet comes, information will be free. But with our technology, we discover that it could cause problems for freedom. So I give you an example of a system being experimented with now in China. They collect information about loans, paying income tax, credit card, utility, interaction with the courts, criminal record, to give you an index of traditional behavior, any traffic problems, 
family planning limits, proper payments for public, uh, public transportation, and interestingly for students here at the uh, academy, the university, academic honesty, which is collected through the life. How many volunteer activities and what the uh, b chief of the block reports about you. And even whether you're a good son or daughter gives you a social index. Then your online behavior, whether you post so-called accurate information or socially destructive information, shopping habits, what you buy, online index, add those together, you have a social credit score. That's you. And that determines access to social services, foreign travel, insurance rates, and, e and even access to planes or high-speed trains. Government jobs, luxury hotel access, and many other items here. So with the system, you see, compared to your image, a lot can be known that affect your life, even if you're not a revolutionary or a criminal. And of course, China monitors conversations and are even able to destroy messages before they appear. and even considers taking away uh, access through the internet with the cooperation of companies like Apple. So finally, I'll talk about robots and intelligent agents, which as you have heard, are growing importance. But also, artificial agents are becoming important in people's lives. A recent survey uh, shows that people see many benefits to artificial intelligence. Uh, this is a, a uh, survey by Ericsson. And as you can see, there in the middle. Uh, about one third of the people would like to have an artificial intelligent agent as their boss. So not only can these things be our servants, but they could be our, our bosses as well. Uh, and of course, embodied in physical objects, they can do emotional labor. And indeed, uh, we have people getting emotionally involved with their artificial agents. And some surveys show that elderly people love their pet robot more than their own children. Probably with good reason. <laughs> So I'd like to introduce you to my new friend, Azumi Hikari. And her friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> おはよう。あ、今日雨が降るかもしれないから傘持って行って。急がないと遅刻しちゃうよ。行って
きますいってらっしゃい気をつけてね So I'm very impressed by the fact that this young man is so happy. But you see, it robs him of the difficulties and pleasures of a real human being. And we can imagine how more and more people will turn to these artificial things rather than other humans. With the result of more loneliness, fewer families, and even fewer children. So now we've gone through these topics. I'll just speak briefly about the places we've been, which is that mobile communication gives us much happiness and serves us well. But also has costs, both directly through inattention and accidents, and through、uh, the collateral effects of its impact on our relationships. We saw how digital technologies give us more power over our environment, but the environment more power over us. Obviously, there are risks, psychological, political, philosophical,、um, but there are also great opportunities. As you can see, though, we cannot let the technology decide how we should live. We need good policies. To create rules and regulations that will protect our privacy, protect our political liberties, and the quality of our social relationships. And this is a sociological problem, also one of designing systems. So if we face these challenges, we can create. A better world by taking the path that controls the technology and controls human temptation to face the difficult but important challenges ahead of us. Thank you very much.